what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. We're here working on the 1967 Mustang Fastback. To give you a little history on this car, it used to be a Bugatti. It was a Bugatti movie car, so a fake Bugatti. Got crashed in a movie, it's actually an SLC chassis underneath. So we bought this thing, we cut it in half once, cut it in half twice, fit a Dynacorn reproduction Mustang Fastback body onto this thing, and we took it racing. And once we figured out that it runs and drives, now it is time to transform it for SEMA. As of the time I'm saying this right now, we have 28 days until SEMA, so this car has to be SEMA ready in 28 days. We're gonna be doing a very, very, the most fun part of this entire project, which is building a body kit from scratch. We're starting with a render that is this right here, and we're building that body kit out in real life on this car here. We're gonna go through, show you how to do it at home. It's also a cheap, kind of inexpensive way to build a car body kit if you're interested in doing it at home. And we're gonna finish the front end conversion. We have 1967 front end stuff and we're converting over to 1970. This is gonna be one of the most fun episodes on this whole build series. Stay tuned. All right guys, when we last left off, we were talking about this front end. We wanna start working on this and getting it kind of wrapped up. There is a, we'll call it a uh, decorative trim piece. It, it, well, we need to make one that's shaped like this without that big cut in the middle and we're gonna make it out of steel. So Oscar's gonna start working on that with a press brake and some sheet metal and we're gonna bend that into there and that covers up this piece and then this bolts into a lower piece that we'll talk about after we finish this piece. One thing at a time guys, don't get ahead of ourselves. Oscar just wrapped up building uh, two of the front end pieces. So we didn't have the material to start this early in the morning, so we started this guy. Now this is our bar that runs across here, makes this initial step. Um, it eventually flows into this over here, this nice flat over here. So this is gonna be fiberglassed in, and then it'll flow into that nice radius right there. And that is a finished piece that you'll see right there on the front of the car. Then the next piece is this piece. So it's kind of hard to see because it's all in the shadows here, but that's the second step up piece that runs into our grill. So this is just, you know, continuing the work to follow the renders, building stuff out of raw steel rather than trying to make the other stuff work. So imagine you have the headlight, rest of the headlight bucket, headlight, grill flowing all the way through here with the hexagonal honeycomb pattern, and then the other headlight bucket. And underneath sits our own custom bumper. So very far in the process of the front end. In the last episode, we talked about how we didn't have an OEM fender and we thought it would be a really good idea too. And you guys were very kind, sent me emails for a bunch of different resources. I'm sorry I didn't get to respond to all of you guys. Somebody very, very early on shot me a resource and we found one within about 30 or 40 minutes from us. So we went and picked up this baby this morning, 125 bucks, not too bad. Uh, we don't know if it's good or not, but I really love how they uh, cut off the must on the thing and just wrote Stang. That's pretty cool. So um, that's going to have a good amount of body work that needs to be done with it if we keep it. But obviously, so with this one. But Oscar did get all the gaps perfect on this one. But we want to test it out. Right, Oscar? We'll give it a shot. So um, Oscar's going to test fit it on and we'll see if it fits as good as the other side. Alrighty, well we cut up and tested another fender. Sorry, 67 Mustang fans, we cut up another fender. This one we actually found out is covered in body filler. All these like little pink looking spots, there's a lot of body fillers gone onto that, so the body work would have been immense. But uh, it doesn't really matter because even when we snugged it up, it was is basically too wide. So it's, what it's got us thinking is that actually, it's not really so much the fault of the fenders, albeit the reproduction fenders are garbage. It's that I think our reproduction cowl is a little too wide. I think it's a little bit wider than it needs to be. And that led us down a road of kind of a lot of problems, but we've got a modified fender now and uh, it's probably gonna require less body work than this one would to fix up. So we're gonna go with the modified one. Final answer. 
Next up, Oscar's gonna build a bash bar that goes in this lower section right here, basically kind of a, towards the bottom of our frame rails um, that have been built. And that job is gonna be really to do a lot of supporting of our upcoming front bumper that we're gonna make uh, out of thin air and fiberglass. Looking mean, Oscar's got the uh, new trim piece, the front end piece, and the new bash bar built in right behind that to support it all. Can't even really see it? That's the idea. Now we mentioned this a little bit in the last episode, but we gotta go, this car's gotta go down a lot more. It's raised up as high as it can go. It needs to go closer to as low as it can go or around there before we start building our wide body kit and start uh, designing those over fenders. So we're gonna hit the coilovers and crank them back down. All right, now comes the exciting part. We've got the car lowered down to the right height that we want to have it at. We got that fender clearance out so the wheel can fully turn back and forth. And now it's time to start creating our body kit. So the way we do this, I'm not saying this is the best way, but it's the best way that I know how, is we use solid steel rod in a few different thicknesses. This one right here is quarter inch. This one right here is 3 16 And we bend it into the shape that we want. Uh, creating the exterior structure, if you will. Well, it's actually the interior structure. Interior structure of the shape that we want, expecting to lay a fabric over top of it. The way we get perfect bends is by using a roller and then obviously just matching it up with like circular things. So as you feed that rod through here, you can crank this thing down, roll it through, and it will shape it into a circle. So some of the uh, base points for like a body kit is you need that flat section that follows your wheel and, and your tire arch. And at this point, I'm just gonna walk over to another car that already exists so I can kind of show you. So this Lamborghini is a perfect example. If we were trying to recreate this quarter panel out of thin air, we need a piece of metal for the inner structure that's going to run this bend and this bend and then as we we're going to tuck the fabric on the back side of it stretch it over the front side of it and it'll give us this flat spot right here and then say well we want this bend right here now lambo is like the easiest version because it's almost all designed with peaks and stuff so it's like really easy anyways if you wanted this you run a rod from inside underneath there to there one rod goes that way one rod goes that way you guys get the idea we're building this inner structure and then we're like thump, throwing fabric over it tightening that fabric down and then we can fiberglass right over that and we're basically using that as an, a, an interior mold. So on this car, we're not building a body kit that bolts on and bolts off. This body kit is one piece. This fender and headlight bucket and the wide body part of the fender is all one piece, comes on and off the car as one piece. On our last one that we did for the jump -Con, no, sorry, the burnt -Con, it's uh, it's removable. Hence, you can see it's it's not there. So you're gonna probably see us welding this metal rod straight to the body and then fiberglass over all of this stuff and then fiberglass it right to the body to have a nice secure connection with everything. Check that out, how cool does that look? So you can start to see what we're doing here is we're basically building the, the outer scaffolding for that body line right there, the, the ring around here, and the body line going back. All this stuff, although it would be 
a decently cool body kit if it just started here and goes down. That won't be, this is just structure. Um, that won't actually be a part of the design because the design that we have, it flows from this edge right here. So that's the next step that we're working on. It's cutting out sheet metal and the different things that we're gonna put in place to have the Cessonite tucked behind and then stretch to our end point right here. So Oscar's got a great example over here. This front end is like, really shaping up and looking really, really cool. I'm super happy about it. So you can see how this is going through here. And then Oscar's templating out now with painter's tape where our um, our sheet metal that holds the Cessonite down is gonna roll through here and kind of come through here and down to here. And that will, the Cessonite is gonna tuck under that and then run from that point out to our outer existing point. Uh, so it's a little, that might be a little complicated or hard to imagine, but when we show you guys it at all, it'd probably fall into place. But I'm super happy with how uh, I don't know, just aggressive and good looking this thing is, uh, as wide as it is, and it's really, really coming together. So this is, like I said, this is gonna be, this is an exciting episode, because this, when we get to see this thing all together, it's gonna be super cool. Big news guys, our wheel spacer came in for the other side, so now they're matching. Again, these are just for mock-up, our wheels are in production. The structures and the, let's call it, fabric holder downer brackets have all been built front and back. So, the fabric that we're using is an aircraft wing fabric. It's called Cessonite, uh, that a viewer told us about last time we were building a custom wide body kit. We tuck it under the backside of this, we run it all the way over our edge here, hot glue it down in the back, and then um, you can hit it with a heat gun and in spots where it has a little bit of, um, it's where it's not taut and it's not tight, and you can hit it with a heat gun and it actually will shrink back for you. So it's pretty cool, it's a very malleable fabric. Uh, honorable mention for this strategy too is you can, you can run tape. You can just take a lot of masking tape and start running lines, some people do that too. Uh, but I had really, really good results with the Cessonite. So that is the next step. We're gonna start to get the Cessonite in on all of these panels. If we get it in and we get it in how we like it, and where, where, where it goes and everything, then we can actually move on to fiberglass which is huge so um, we'll get this Cessonite dialed in hopefully and then we can move on to glassing it. Take a quick second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by ShipStation. ShipStation is the leading web-based order management and shipping software. The second I started listing my own merch on my website, knew that I had to be able to manage shipping and that's when I got ShipStation. You wanna set yourself up before you have a ton of orders already racked up. You don't wanna wait till you're drowning in orders to find the right shipping solution. You wanna to upgrade to ShipStation today. And ShipStation integrates into a ton of different platforms, whether you're selling on Etsy or Amazon or eBay or your own website. And handling shipping for all of your different products all in one place means you can free up your time to be spent otherwhere, like business growth or research and development. You don't have to waste any extra time on shipping and fulfillment. ShipStation also has a ton of automated functions that can help speed up your process and you can compare different carriers different rates, make sure you're setting up different products to always get the best rate when they ship out. And the shipping rates that you get access to through ShipStation are amazing. You get access to the same rates that Fortune 500 companies do, whether you're just shipping out a stack of products or a whole truckload. So join the over 130,000 companies that use ShipStation and over 98% of companies that start using ShipStation use it for the entirety of their company. So you can ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash B is for build and sign up for a free 60 day trial Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free at ShipStation.com slash B is for build. Thanks to ShipStation for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it.
Got some pros and cons to the Sessanite. Now, it's nothing that we can't work around. We'll tell you our strategy for what we're doing. Uh, it, we started heat gunning it, and we saw it shrink back, and it looks really cool. And then, and then I kind of saw this edge right here. Lots of curvature here, lots of curvature here. That's not how it's supposed to look. If you wanted to build a, most body kits actually do have that curve right on. It's a really good, good use for that. Our design actually calls for a straight edge from this point to this point as you're going, as you're going across the radius. It needs to be straight, can't curve down. So we figured out, hang on, phone call. Phone call, big success. We are nowhere near to getting our shop built on the new property. Cities and permits and rules and stuff are so uncool. Let's just let us build as big of a car shop as we need. Like, this was America. Yeah, this is America. Back to the Sessa Blasters. All right, so here's the deal, guys. We heated it, and we think that we shrunk it a little bit too much in here, which uh, gave it this drawback. Or we shrunk it too much through here, or maybe just the middle. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's producing the wrong shape. I believe that we could shrink it less, and this wouldn't happen, but we need to have a mirror image from side to side, and it can't just be up to the fate of the heat gun and how much you shrink it and stuff like that. The cool side of it is this bend is something that we really needed, and it's really hard to do to flow perfectly into the body line. It just, we needed to go straight edge up until here. So this good, this bad, this bad. So um, we're going to try the tape method next, um, which is just like it sounds. You just run tape uh, straight and you just have to make sure you're not running on a piece of tape like crazy angle, but just run it straight like this, work your way through. All you need here is to have a structure, something that will hold the weight of the fiberglass and hold it in place so you can get some resin on that fiberglass and once you get your first layer of fiberglass to dry, you're good enough to keep working. So we're gonna go ahead and try and work through this with tape. We still haven't gotten to the very, very complex angle that is that, so tape I think is gonna be our friend here, I hope. Tape was the method for this shape. Tape really worked out. We were able to get a lot of the contours that we needed in here and everything. One small mistake that was made was when we're pulling the tape originally from here to here, we actually pulled this bar a little bit over so you can see it's not, it's supposed to be dead straight with the high point. It's really close, but it just jogs over a little bit. We can fix that in fiberglass. We just have to sand this, this edge of the peak down and then build this edge of the peak up and it'll, it'll fix out. But that is looking really, really cool. <laughs> With the color change, it does look a little strange, but once we get it all glassed in here, guys, it's gonna flow really nicely. This is looking awesome. So I'm really excited to see how it goes on the back. We're expecting the back to be more sesonite than tape, but who knows at this point? We're surprising ourselves every day. Well, again, if you want that negative concave, that negative bend, Sessonite is killing it. We were able to get somewhat of a straight edge like through here, but other than that, it's got a lot of concave to it, which is just not the design. So building a body kit out of tape, boys. We ran down to Harbor Freight. We got 10 rolls of tape. Hopefully we won't run out. It's tape strategy. It's kind of hilarious. Our body kit, the base layer will be Harbor Freight tape. It'll, it will always be living underneath this Mustang. So uh, I, pro I probably already mentioned a few times that we're on a very, very tight deadline. What day is today? We have 22 days to finish this build. Um, so there's, there's always this mental, this internal balance of nitpicking small things. It adds time. If you say, oh, that's not good enough, or oh, we don't like the way that that turned out, we gotta change it. It obviously adds a lot of time. But I do think it's really apparent when you show up to SEMA 
who does that and who fixes little things that they don't like so they have the exact perfect image of, of what they wanted to build versus the people that don't they just say ah, that's good enough so we've always went back and fixed it and i think that's part of the reason we sometimes run so far behind deadline and behind schedule but um anyways now's one of those times let's talk about it so we're taping off our rear over fender it looks super cool um and but it started to look a little plain. It's like, it just looks like we just kind of came straight out and the rendering didn't seem as plain. And we were thinking like, why, why is that? Like what's going on? So I emulated putting a vent here and yeah, we don't have our side skirt car up in the air. does not help the looks of it at all, but we wanted a little bit more, a little bit more drama, a little bit, a little bit more something. And what we thought was, is this body line is getting kind of muted. This body line was kind of disappearing a little bit. And that's such a important part of a 67 fastback. I did a little bit of research and I found out that, that, well, I already knew that the rendering is based off of a 1970 Mustang. We have a 67 and those bodies are pretty different. And one of the really different defining things is the hips from the rear window line out here, the hips on that, that, that 70 Mustang go like way out to here. And it just has more hips on it already. And then when you extend it, it looks really good. Um, and on this one, it's like our extension is too much. We're going too much more than what the car already gave you, kind of is, is the feeling that we have. So we're gonna try something. We're gonna try taking this body line right here and raising it up a little bit more um, and then moving it out a little bit more. Essentially kind of giving, <laughs> we're double wide bodying the car. We're gonna make it look like the factory car before we attach to it was wider and a little bit taller. And then we're gonna attach to it and then build out. Again, kind of a nitpicky thing, but if we don't have this big hip right here on this rear quarter panel, it will not look as good as it should. And that's, that's really what we're here to do is like to take something that looked awesome and build it out in real life. And our differences in cars are leading us to this challenge that we have to uh, overcome. So we're gonna do that by uh, mimicking this angle with a bent piece of rod, then welding the rod here, bringing it out here and up as far as we kind of naturally can while also tying it straight back into our rear point here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and tape over it and see how it looks. Okay, test over fender is completed. So the, the arch kind of comes out this way a little bit more to widen out this gap here and then follows the, the already kind of established body arc where it gets, it's a lot more slanted here and it's a lot more flat here and really just helps fatten up this section right here. It looks really, really good. I think that's like the big change that we needed to really help accentuate this area too, like diving down. Um, it's hard to see with it all being blue tape, but it definitely gives it more of that curve that we wanted. So that is good. And uh, now Oscar's got to, uh, so this whole side's like wrapped up. Now Oscar's got to work onto this side and, and change it. You can see now when we look back at this side, how much kind of like less dramatic this side is and how much we really need that, that extra bend in there. And then uh, we'll get that in there and we'll be able to move on to fiberglass. Oh, also the other front is done. So we got front number one and front number two is wrapped up. So yeah, we're close to being able to move on to the fiberglass stage, which is really exciting. It's time to move on to the next step, which is fiberglassing this stuff in. So we're gonna use some, oh, I just realized I had image stabilization turned off on the camera for a while. I'm really sorry about that. I'll try and fix it as much as I can in software. My bad. Now that we've got the shape, it's time to cut some of the tape back so we can have a mechanical bond to the actual car itself and start making this thing out of fiberglass. So we've got some uh, 1.5 ounce chopped strand fiberglass mat. This is heavy duty, hardcore stuff that is really, really strong. So it won't take a ton of layers of this to have a very, very strong body kit. Um, and then, like I said, bring that tape back so that you're actually fiberglassing and resining onto the primed metal and it will bond onto your car really nicely. The game plan is, is that there, 
still will be some blue tape underneath in the very bottom layer of this and we don't care. The guys over at Fiberglass got us set up with this stuff. They're a really good resource for fiberglass, carbon fiber, all this stuff. They, they hooked us up with a bunch of these uh, products when we were building the wide body kit and the uh, carbon fiber doors on the Burnt Con, which by the way is actually going back to SEMA, but we will unveil that at SEMA. We're gonna do some changes to it and send it back. Anyways, shout out to Fiberglass. Thank you for hooking us up with these products to let us make crazy stuff. And now it goes on the Mustang. There we go. We got three very, very thick layers of fiberglass on over our tape. So you can see how we cut the tape back on the edges where it's fiberglassing to the car because that's like our mechanical bond. And the bottom side is just now masking tape and metal skeleton. Got the rear quarter done. And now this is the wider version. And you can see how much wider we went there on that quarter panel. And I think it looks really, really good. Um, Oscar just finished taping off the other side as well. These have a little bit of concave to them that we don't want. And we're going to work that out after we have glass in here by using a lot more fiberglass. That's it guys. We built a body kit out of wire and tape and a little bit of sesonite here and there. And we're getting it glassed in. So that's another week of progress on our SEMA build. We've got 22 days from today to be done with this project. So uh, we were just talking, it's like, we gotta really try and pick up a little bit of ground. But everything that we're doing so far is turning out very, very good. And it's at the level that we wanted to, so that's the good part. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos on our road to SEMA. We've got four cars gonna be on display at SEMA now. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> and we've got five cars going to SEMA because I just won't want to drive around. Do you think it's my R35 GTR? It is, yes. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you follow us, BS for Build on Instagram, bsforbuild.com if you want to check out our new merch. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Come on.